All right, are we here? Oof, okay, this thing. I have a post-it note on top of my camera to avoid glare. And it's showing up here. Uh, 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 I don't know. Okay, how about that? All right. We are good, I think. No? Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. Mm. What else do we need to do? Um. Uh, I think I can probably make it its own video, I think. Uh, Uh, should I make it its own video? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I'm still thinking about one thing for the video. Because uh, there's this there's this thing that I forgot that I wanted to say. So I'm thinking whether if to make a new video just with that, or to just record a clip and stitch it inside a previous video. Um, I think I may just want to record the clip and stitch it into the previous video because otherwise uh, it's going to be a little okay yes I'm just going to do that so um, all right where were we where are we all right <clears throat> I'm ready uh, okay, three, two, one. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, no, the glare is still pretty bad. There you go. Yes, exactly. No? No. Yeah, I think that should be work fine. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jose Luis here. This is Parametric Camp, live streams, computational design goodness, Python jokes, everything. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who might be new to the channel, uh, we have a Discord server where we go, where we talk offline. We have a Google Calendar where you can, that you can subscribe to, to know when we go live. We also post when we go live on our, mostly on Instagram channel, but um, yeah, it's right over there. And you're welcome to follow us if you want. And um, today we started recording. I'm kind of annoyed about this, actually. All right. So now, now it just keeps going back up. And before it was just dumping it down. What if I do this? No, I don't like that call. No, there you go. Mm hmm. All right. So. This morning, we started recording our the first videos in our new series, Advanced Development for Grasshopper. So, so this afternoon, we're going to continue recording those videos. This morning, we did a general intro to the series. We took a look at the C Sharp script component. We did a few like super basic examples with it. So I think what I want to do today, this afternoon, is I want to record a clip with some further references or reading that I forgot to talk about this morning, and we will insert that in the video, in one of the, this morning's videos. And then we're going to start the plugin development. So we're going to start doing a few exercises where we're going to start doing a few exercises where I'm basic, we're basically going to be prototyping the parametric cam toolbox plugin or whatever that's called that we're going to be making. Okay, 
which is going to be, we're just going to do a, a bunch of arithmetic uh, functions. Um, we're just going to do a bunch of arithmetic functions, really. It's going to be quite simple. <sighs> is that true? Yes, it is true. It is true. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then if we have time, we may start the new section, which is Rhino Common and Geometry, whatever. But I don't think we're going to do that because I may have to cut it a little short this afternoon because I have to run some errands before the afternoon. So, so we'll see. We'll see where we go. OK, so what we're going to do first is we're going to record that clip that I did not record this afternoon, this morning. It's going to be this. All right. So I'm going to be talking about some references for further reading. <clears throat> okay. So let's do that. <clears throat> oh, 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 and I forgot I wanted to say this. Sorry, I interrupted the video, but I would also like to offer you some additional readings in case uh, what you learn here in Parametric Camp is not enough or you want to complement your learnings with other stuff. I'm actually a huge, huge fan of the work that Raja Isa from McNeil and from the New School of Architecture in San Diego is it San Diego? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, New School of Architecture and Design. I'm doing it over, doing it over again. It is in San Diego, yes. Okay, fine. All right. <clears throat> doing it over again. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. And I forgot that I wanted to offer you some additional readings and some references. So sorry, I interrupt this, this, this video. So I'm actually a huge fan of the work that Raja Isa, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, I'm sorry. Raja's work from McNeil and from the New School of Architecture and Design in San Diego. So I'm actually a huge fan of the work that she's done. For those of you, you probably are already familiar with her Essential Mathematics for Computational Design, which is a reference book in the class that I teach as uh, Introduction to Computational Design. It's already in the fourth edition. But particularly for this series, I would like to recommend one of her most recent publication, Essential Guide to C-Sharp Scripting for Grasshopper, where she goes over many of the topics that I will be going over in this, um, in this uh, series. It's just that she also takes the chance to use that as a segue to introducing folks to C-sharp programming, and also to use that as a framework for discussing some of the data structures that relate to geometry uh, that you can use in C-sharp. It's a really good publication. Um, it's very comprehensive. It's a really good mix of Grasshopper, C-sharp programming, geometry. It's quite, it's quite nice. And it assumes also that you probably know not much about programming or geometry or anything, as opposed to this series where I'm assuming you know some of that stuff already. Uh, she also has this other publication, The Essential Algorithms and Data Structures. This will come in very handy down the road, especially when we start talking about the data tree structure in Grasshopper, uh, which is a very unique thing. And so I really recommend that you check this out. And uh, But I really, really recommend this, um, this 
book if you wanna. This is freely available. You can just Google it and download it for free from McNeil's website, open source, everything. It's really, really good. Thanks a lot, Raja, for your, for your work. And uh, if you're more of a Python-oriented person, then <laughs> there's also this publication called the uh, Python Primer for Rhino. It's a little dated. It's from Rhino 5. It was made in 2011. But it's really comprehensive as well. It's really beautifully illustrated. It's very nice. Although it's a little more Rhino and Rhino script specific. If you want to learn more about Python up, applied to Grasshopper, then the Rhino Python guide in the MacNeil website has a special section about Python in Grasshopper, where you can learn a little bit about, um, you know, how to start the component, how to use it, uh, how to connect to Rhino to Python libraries, etc, etc. And I just don't, I just have not found so far a document of this kind, like the Essential Guide or the Rhino Primate that focuses specifically on Python for Grasshopper. So if in the future, after the recording, such document showed up in the world, I would be more than happy for any of you viewers to just post, put up a, a bunch of links in the comments uh, for such a recommendation. Okay. And sorry, let's go back to the main video. All right, so that's what I wanted to say. I'm going to write this here. Python primer probably insert the end of the previous okay um All right, good. Okay, that was fine. All right, good. So we got it and the Python primer. Okay. Okay, actually, you know what I'm thinking? I am thinking that I am thinking that this video, the plugin, the, so the next video that I want to record is a video where I say that we're going to be, re, we're going to be developing over the course of, we're going to be developing over the course of this series. We're going to be developing a plugin and we're going to be prototyping it in C sharp. And then we will move all that code to a native component. But I think I want to, I will want to re-record this video once we are done with the series and I have the actual files and the plugins so that I can show them in the video. So what I'm going to do is I need, I would like to, I would like to, what? I would like to just record a temporary one where I say those things, uh, what I say those things and then I say those things and then I will replace that video in the series in the future. Okay. So I think that's what we're going to do. And for that, I'm going to go like this. Yeah. I'm going to use this thing here. Okay. And I'm going to write myself a couple notes here. Uh, 
part. Okay. I'm going to record this here showing the final plugin, the final plugin, and here in the final plugin. Showing the final plugin and the C sharp script prototypes. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to re record the in production showing maybe or maybe not. We'll see. Ooh. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so then let's just do this. Let's record this video and this one is going to be uh, the first in the exercises series uh, for plugin development. Okay. Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And if you're watching this video, it's probably because you are in the middle of the series. Blah, 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 blah. Starting over again. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're following the series Advanced Development in Grasshopper. Um, if you are here, we are about oh, <laughs> starting over again. <laughs> what do I want to say? Uh, because you're watching the series and then uh, what I want to say is that the way it's going to work is going to be lectures and exercises and that we're going to build incrementally uh, a plugin. <clears throat> I'm going to start from simple stuff. All right. Uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm doing it again. Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And if you're watching this video, it's probably because you are following this our series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. So in this series, I'm going to teach you a lot of technical stuff, but I'm going to be inserting in the middle of all that teaching uh, a practical exercise where we're going to be building together a Grasshopper plugin. That plugin is going to be called the Parametric Cam Toolbox, basically because it's going to be a mixed bag of like utility functions, arithmetic, vector algebra, surfaces, uh, simulation, basically components that I think illustrate many of the topics that we will be seeing throughout the course. So I'm going to be inserting those in the middle. We're going to start by prototyping all of those components in plain C sharp script components. And once we're done with that, and we know and when and then we move to how do we actually create a native grasshopper plugin, then we will port all that code into the native plugin, you will see that it's going to be super, super easy and seamless. And then we will end up compiling and maybe even publishing that paper out uh, um, that <laughs> that paper, that, that plugin out there in the wild. The whole purpose is to illustrate the technical. I don't think the plugin is going to be amazing at all, but it's going to be a good illustration of the things that we're going to be learning in this series. So my recommendation to you is that as you follow this series, you definitely check out the more content oriented uh, videos. But at the same time, if you have the time, you're welcome to also follow the hands on practical exercises. Those are going to be 
to reinforce the content and maybe here and then I may introduce like small new topics or small different variations of the same idea. They will be really, really helpful for you to learn and consolidate the things that you're going to be uh, learning in this series. Okay. So without further ado, in the next video, I think we're going to kickstart that plugin development. Again, we're going to start by prototyping everything in C-sharp scripting and then move on to native. And I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create a collection of simple components that are going to do basic mathematical arithmetic. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, you know, a little boring, but uh, for the sake of learning. Okay, so let's get uh, busy and let's move on to our first set of C sharp components inside of Grasshopper. Bye bye. All right. That was a decent. So I'm going to. Oh, I forgot to say that that was temporary. I mean, it doesn't matter. I will just replace the video. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay, we're good. So let's now fire some new Rhino. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, we're going to put it here. Okay, and then this is going to go here. Okay, dog, and then somewhere there. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right. How are we doing? You're very really silent this afternoon, huh? You want to say hi or something? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. All right. So this video is going to be a set of utility components. All right. Okay. And actually for this one, because they're going to be utility, I can probably just go fully like this, right? Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so let's... How does the math component A and B resolve? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, actually, for this one, I think I probably want to record an introduction at the end once I have introduced the 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 once I have introduced the no. I probably want to do that, yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to start right away doing it. And then by the end of the video, I will record the introduction. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start creating a bunch of simple 
arithmetic, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, and maybe the power one, which is also kind of interesting. We're going to do them really fast because it's going to be super easy. So the way we're going to do that is the first one is going to take a little more time. So we're going to drop here a C sharp script component. And then because I want to mimic uh, a little bit the spirit of Grasshopper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the inputs so that they feel like the original component. So I'm going to rename this to capital A. I'm going to rename this to capital B. And I'm going to rename this to capital R because if I left it at A, both inputs and outputs with the same name on a C sharp script component do not work. They will give me trouble down the road. So I'm going to rename that as such. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going because what I want to do is I want to add two numbers. What I need to make sure is that the input type of A is going to be of the type double. Remember, double is a number with a lot of decimal precision. And the input for B is also going to be double. Turns out that the original addition component can add not just numbers, but other things such as complex numbers, such as vectors, such as points. We're not going to get into that uh, so far. Okay. The idea of like multiple types, etc., is a little complicated. So I'm going to remove this. And then for the sake of testing, I'm going to add here a couple of sliders. This is going to go from minus 10 to positive 10. Remember, negative numbers do also deserve attention, you know, and then uh, we're going to put that in there. I'm going to put that this is a little too much. I'm going to just put it in here, another one in here. And then I'm going to plug in a small panel to see the result of my operation. So that's going to be this one here. And for the sake of labeling, I'm just going to right clear and I'm going to call this addition. And I'm going to click on the paint bucket so that the name shows up correctly over there. All right, beautiful. So I think I'm ready to now start developing my addition component. So how does that work? I'm going to dock it here and I'm going to double click. I'm going to move this to the side so that my head is not on the way. And I'm going to now start developing. So this is going to be extremely easy. Remember this, um, see, it's just for the sub for we're warming up here, but if you know C sharp and you know, you're probably, you're probably really uh, easy with what we're going to see in this video. So there's two ways we could go about this. So we could do it the really nice verbose way where we say, I'm going to create a new variable that's going to be called, for example, sum, and that's going to be the result of input A and input B. And remember, they're already double because I have right clicked here and set those type hints. Okay. And I'm going to say, so here, that's what, that would be the calculations or the algorithm. That's the algorithm that we compute. And then here, the output would be R equals the result of that calculation. All right. This, I find it a super clean, elegant, maybe it has a little bit of overhead because of this variable, but um, it's a really nice and clean way of writing C sharp script components. I very much like having the, all the algorithm and all the logic at the beginning, and then making sure that the outputs are released or are assigned by the very end of the script. It's just a little thing that I like. Some people um, just assign the output right away when it when it when they have the result, whatever. Nah, it's a matter of taste, okay? So we could do this, and this would work. So I, if I click play, you see that this already has, uh, uh, and uh, you can see that now I have like negative, and negative. So these both are working really well. Or if you are more of the shorthand kind of person, I'm going to comment all of this out. You could also just because it's a very simple operation, you could just say, okay, well, maybe I can just get away by saying the result is going to be a plus b. Okay, so we just shorthand it in one go. Um, that works. And it's going to be you see if I hit play, the component compiles and it's the same thing. It's just that, you know, when things start getting more beefy and there's more code, uh, it, this kind of shortcuts are not. So I, especially for the education, I like being very verbose. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick to this formula. I'm just going to stick to detaching the algorithm. So all the logic and stuff, which will start getting more complex as we progress in this series. And then I'm going to make sure that at the very end, I assign the outputs correctly. So R, A, whatever those are. Okay. 
Beautiful. So I hit that and then I have my addition component ready there. So now I can just pretty much copy and paste and say, well, this is going to be subtraction. Um, I'm actually subtraction. I'm going to not do full caps addition. So subtraction. And then here, what I do is I'm just going to replace this subtraction is a minus B. And then this is sub. And then as I do that, you can see that 10 minus 10 equals zero. All right. And this is negative 10 minus blah, blah, blah. It's 20. I think this is looking pretty good. Okay. So now what about multiplication? Same thing. I'm just going to right. And then for the sake of it, perhaps because I'm going to start copying and pasting a lot, I don't want to be renaming the variables all the time. So maybe I'm just going to name this result and then result. And then result here is going to be a times B, duh, you know, and then for division. All right. So for division here, I'm just going to double click and you can see that I have a divided by B. Okay. I hit run and this works 10 divided by 10 is one 10 divided by blah, 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 negative. So it works. Okay. Alrighty. What about, is there a few other more advanced? So we have power, we have, um, the absolute value I also like, and we have the square root. So I'm going to try those out. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to say, this is going to be power. Okay. So a to the power of B. And the way I'm going to do that is that the result is going to be math dot power of a to the b and 10 to the 10 is going to be <laughs> so 10 to the second 10 to the third is going to be a thousand so this is looking good so what about the square root so for the square root um for the square root we don't need two inputs, so I'm going to delete this and I'm going to zoom in and delete that one. And you can see that the component goes red and the name B does not exist. And that's because the code still has here inside. It has this B here. All right. So the result now is going to be math dot and I need to find the square root of the value of A. And the output is going to be this one. OK, so the square root of 10 the square root of nine, the square root of six, the square root of four. Okay. So it looks like it's working and I'm also going to do the absolute value. All right. Absolute value. So that's going to be, um, very simple. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a V S of a. So four is four, blah, blah, blah. And then when we go negative, we still stay positive here, which is great. All right. Beautiful. So we have in less than three minutes, we have programmed seven basic arithmetic components. Isn't that great? Huh? <laughs> okay, I would like to do a few, um, I would like to do a few, what am I going to, I'm going to save this first. I'm going to save this as E1 utility components. Okay. <clears throat> so that's fine. <clears throat> Okay, what is the next thing that I would like to do? I would like to show how to do string manipulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. 
The next thing we're going to try is we're going to try to implement a few components that are going to help us do string manipulation. So if you go to Grasshopper, you know that you have somewhere, which I forget where that is, it's in sets, right? Here, you have a bunch of components that concatenate text, tell us the length of the text, um, split it in a list, whatever. So we're going to do a, we're going to break text into individual characters. Yes, yeah, so something like that. So we're going to do a few examples of that. So I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a component that tells us, given a string, it tells us how long that string is. So I'm going to drop here a new C sharp string component. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say str. So that's going to be the string, or I'm going to call it uppercase S just to be consistent with how the Grasshopper typically names inputs. And then here, I'm going to call L, I'm going to call it the length, right? Now, we need to be mindful because here, I would like to plug in, for example, hello world. I would like to plug in hello world and I will be able to access, I would want to be able to access this as a string element. So in this case, I need to make sure that when I right click, this is very, very common to forget. Okay, you're gonna forget this all the time. Um, but it's very common to, <clears throat> it's very helpful to remember that we need to do this every time. And then I would like to go here to type hint and specify that the input here is going to be a string. So that when I double click, you can see that already here as an argument, we have a string argument called S. And I'm going to plug in a small panel here, just here. All right. So now what I want to do is I need to compute here string length. And this component all of a sudden just grew very large. <laughs> okay. I, what I want to do is I want to compute the length of this string. So what that means is that, as I said here, I'm going to have the algorithm and here I'm going to have the outputs. For the algorithm, I'm going to define a variable called of a type integer because it's a count, it's how many elements. And for this integer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to read the length property of the string element. And then the output is going to be that result. Let's see if that works. I'm going to press play and it turns out that yes, hello world is two words with five characters each plus the white space plus the exclamation sign. So that is 12 characters. If I were to change this, blah, 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 then it would be many more, but I don't want that. Okay. So this is, for example, how we can calculate with a component, the length of a string. Now, what about ca concatenating two strings together? All right. So we can do that too. So let's, I'm going to copy this one here. I'm going to copy this one just because I already have the two inputs. I'm going to right click and disconnect the first one, right click and disconnect the second one. And I'm going to call this string concatenate. All right. Then the result is going to be R. And then for example, here, I'm going to write hello. Okay. And then in the next one, I'm going to write world. And then what I would like to read here is hello world all together. Now the component is failing. Why is it failing? Because right now, since I copied this component from over here, this component has by default the input, what I used to have before, which is of the type double. And the component is telling me that it failed to come back to convert from double into text, sorry, from text to double, right? So what I need to do is I need to go back and say, no, the input is not a double, it's a string. And for B, it also needs to be a string. And once I have that, then I still have errors, but that's because the code is still whatever it was here. Okay. So if I remove this and I remove this, you will see that now the component works perfectly fine. All right. So what is the algorithm want to be, going to be? I'm going to declare a new variable that I'm going to call result. All right. And that's going to be A plus B. Really just as simple as that, because that's how we can concatenate two strings together. And then R is going to be that variable that I just created result. 
all right? And turns out that what we got is out there. And because I don't have a white space here, both words are together. So that is like that. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so this is working great. But now what I would like to do is I would like to create another component that given a string like this, what it does is it takes that string and it breaks it down into individual characters and it splits each one of those characters, one after the other, on as a list. All right. So that's going to be super easy as well. It's just that it's going to involve a tiny bit more of code because we're going to need to create a list, take the string, take each one of the characters, push it to the list and then output the list. Super easy as well. So let's take a look at that. So we have here, hello world as an input. This is a string, so that's fine. And R, I'm going to rename this to R as result. Or I would name this like charts, for example. That could be the name of the output. And then what I'm going to do is the following. The algorithm is going to be all the way here. And the outputs, I'm going to delete the outputs for the time being, and we will take care of that. And the algorithm, I'm also going to delete it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a list, an empty list. Then I'm going to go through each one of the characters in the string, take the character, add it to the list. And then I will output here over charts, I will output that list. So very easy. So list, I want to create a list of strings, which is going to be called characters. And it's, I'm going to initialize it as an empty string. Uh, autocomplete is not great uh, inside the C sharp script component. So I'm going to create a new list. All right. And now with a for loop, I'm going to iterate with a for loop for int i equals zero. i is less than the length of the string, how many characters it has, and then i plus plus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take for each one of those. I'm going to add to the characters, I'm going to add the element that is in position i on that string. Remember that strings can be accessed with the iterator with the array, and then you can access each one of the characters. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to say chars, the output is going to be that list that I just created characters. All right. Let's see if this works. I have the impression that it's going to fail. Oh, it did fail. Let's see what is going on. Okay. All right. Very good. So it turns out that, okay, let's read the error. On line 62 over here, it says that it cannot convert from char to string. Why is that? Well, it turns out that when I access each one of the char each one of the characters on the string with the array accessor, Turns out that the result of this is not a tiny string with one letter, it's actually a char. It's a different data type. And therefore, when it gets added to characters, it cannot be converted to a string. So the only thing to do is to just replace this and say this list, instead of being of strings, is going to be of characters. And then as I do this, it turns out that -hoo, I can get the output here with each one of the words as elements, as items on a full list. Okay. What does this mean? And why is this interesting? Remember that we need to type the inputs and we need to specify which type they are. However, for outputs, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that anywhere because the outputs are always going to be of the generic object type. So what that means is that we can output numbers, we can output strings, or we can output lists of numbers, lists of strings, we can output whatever we want without needing to specify that type. It's one of the particularities of C sharp scripting in this case. Uh, that's not how it works in other programming environments. But in this case, we can get away with this because of the architecture of how Grasshopper is coded. All right. Beautiful. So we're going to be actually doing a lot of examples where the output is going to be a list. All right. And okay, so we have a bunch of arithmetic components, we have a bunch of string components, what is it that we're going to do next?
What are we going to do next? We're going to do series and sequences. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to do this one. We're going to do series and we're going to do ranges. Okay. Those are pretty good. Uh, also, it's good practice for for loops and that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And for ranges, that will give us an excuse to talk about intervals and domains. <clears throat> okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to replicate two native grasshopper components that I like a lot, which are the numerical series and the numerical range. And we're going to do that because I think these two are very good examples of how to use for loops to generate sequences of numbers. And also we're going to be outputting those sequences as lists, which is something that I also want to keep doing a couple examples of just to practice. All right. So what are we going to do? We're going to start with a series component. And just as a refresher, how the series component works is that it asks you for the first number you want to start with, for how many, for the step size between numbers, and for how many numbers do you want to output in the series. And then the result is that series. So let me just uh, plug in here a bunch of um, uh, example. So the starting value is going to be, for example, the value of zero. Uh, the step size is going to be, for example, I don't know, uh, the value of 1.5. And then for count, the number of values in the series, I'm going to copy paste this slider, but I'm going to make it so that it can only have natural numbers and that it has to start at zero. We cannot have negative numbers. All right. So I'm going to output, for example, seven numbers. And then the result of that is going to be a series such as this, okay, from zero to the value of nine. So seven numbers that start at zero and have 1.5 at the beginning or five, and then 1.5 step size between them. Okay. So how are we going to replicate that with C sharp? Well, it's actually going to be super easy. So I'm going to copy all of these sliders. I'm going to drop here a C sharp script component. I'm going to start working with the inputs. So I'm going to name this S, I'm going to name this N, we're going to make it as symmetrical to the original as possible. And I'm going to zoom in so that I can add a third input that I'm going to call C. And just as a refresher, S needs to be a double, we can see from the hexagonal uh, uh, icon that it's a number with decimal part, N is also a number with decimal part, but C has no decimal part. We can see the hexagon icon. It's just an integer, right? So we need to make sure that that's also the way our component is configured, the inputs. So the first one is going to be, oops, sorry, S needs to be a double, N needs to also to be a double, and C has to be an integer in this case. I'm going to plug this in, plug this in, and I'm going to rename the output to S, okay? But then you're going to see that um, if I actually run this code, it's probably going to give me some trouble down the road. Let me see if I can make it give me trouble. So here would be the algorithm and here would be the outputs. So if I run this code, exactly. Now I have problems, which is that the parameter name S is duplicate, all right? Which means that I have an input called S and I have an output called S. Native grasshopper components can do that because they have a way of having underlying real names. And what we see here is only just a nickname that can be changed. But for C sharp script components, we don't have that flexibility. So a very common thing to do is to just name this S out. And you see that the error now goes away 
because I don't have duplicate names. Beautiful. So I'm going to plug this in here. And then I'm going to just write here a simple for loop that creates a list of numbers. If you're familiar with C sharp, if you have done our previous um, learning C sharp uh, playlist, you should be already familiar with this. So I'm just going to write it right away. So I'm going to say I'm going to create a list of doubles and I'm going to call them values. And that's going to be uh, and I'm going to initialize that list to an empty list here. All right. With of the type value. Correct. And then with a for loop, uh, with a for loop, I'm going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than c, which is the amount of numbers that we have in this list, and then i plus plus. And then what we're going to do is, and we're going to calculate this value. The value v is going to be equal to the value of s, so the value, the beginning, plus how many times we have iterated, so that's going to be i, times the step size. So between numbers, that's going to be n. So every time we iterate, we say initial value plus the step size times how many values we've already calculated. And then we just add that to v, to the list of values. Sorry, yeah, yeah. to the list of values, we add the value of v. Okay? And it's just, it's, just, it's so simple as that. And then s out, is going to be equal to that list that we just created. Let's see if this works. Woohoo! Hooray! It works. It looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to move this 5, 6.5, 8, 9.5, 11, and then we reduce the step size, and then we have more or less elements. All right, this looks great to me. Beautiful. We are doing a great job. Woohoo! Woohoo! Just, um, I'm going to add here a custom name, series, and um, beautiful. So I think we are ready now to do the next one, which is going to be a numerical range. Ooh, the batteries are dying. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm a little tired this afternoon. I'm, it's been a while that I haven't done like serious streaming, huh? Okay. Oh. <clears throat> what is the next? Um, what is the next? Um, yeah, ranges. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So I'm going to just for the sake of uh, having a reference here, I'm going to drop here a range component, I'm going to delete the original one, I'm going to drop here a range component. And for this one, we're going to take a closer look at the component because this one is going to be a little particular. The range component, if you remember, is a component that creates also a sequence of numbers. But instead of working like series where we specify the start and the step size, what we specified with range is the start and the end. And then range takes care of distributing more or less numbers in between those two extremes. Here we control the beginning and the interval. Here we control the beginning and the end. And the interval is depends on how many elements we have. And but what is particular about range is that n takes the number of steps. So we can take that right away and plug it in here. However, d takes this thing called a numerical range. So if you are good with C sharp, but you're new to Rhino or the Grasshopper world, you might wonder what is a numerical range? What is that? Well, it turns out that numerical domains or numerical intervals 
are a data type that is not part of the um, of the .NET framework. It's not part of C Sharp out of the box, but it actually comes with Rhino and Grasshopper. It's something that is additional, and we have access to it because we live in Rhino world. If we were outside, we would not have that. We have not yet seen how to use Rhino specific data types. I'm actually holding on to that for the next few videos, and that will really uh, involve like geometry types, for example. So I'm getting myself a little ahead, but I think it's going to be an interesting practice to just take a look at how that looks. All right. So in Grasshopper world, what we would do is we would create a domain before this to feed it to the range component. So I'm going to go here to mathematics domain, and I'm going to construct a domain from two numerical values. And that's going to be these two numbers, for example, that's going to be from zero to 10, right? And that's going to be the start and the end. And then here, I'm going to plug that in here. So I have an interval. And then what I'm going to get is a range of values that goes from zero to 10. And with the interval being whatever it has to be to match those. Okay, beautiful. So that is great. So how am I going to replicate this in C sharp? Well, it's going to be also super easy. I'm going to drop here a C sharp script component, I'm going to call this range, and I'm going to click on the bucket, I'm going to give this a D, an uppercase D. And then I'm going to call this uppercase N. And then this one n is going to be of the type integer so that it is this many steps here. Correct. And then for d, what you're going to see is that the, for the type hint, it's not going to be here anymore, which are dot net, well, actually complex, I don't think complex is from dot net. Actually, I'm not sure about that. Now that you I think it's probably dot net, there's probably a numerics complex namespace anyway, but if we go here, you can see that among the structs, we can find interval, which now is a Rhino common data type. I will explain what that means in the next few videos. So interval, I'm going to set this to be of the type interval. And then I'm going to copy and paste this here. And I'm going to plug it in here. Turns out that domain and interval in Grasshopper and Rhino world are synonyms. All right. And I'm going to output here the result. And then I'm going to plug here another component, another panel to just double check that everything is correct. And I'm going to double click on here. All right. Now, as usual, I'm going to say, here goes the algorithm. Here go the outputs. Oh, outputs. Yeah. Beautiful. And then how are we going to do this? Well, what we will need to do is we will need to say, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to generate this range, we're going to follow a very similar process like the one before, except that before going through the list and iterating and creating the new numbers, we need to calculate the step size. And the step size is basically going to be However long the interval is, so the biggest number, in this case, 10 minus the smallest number, divided by the amount of gaps that we want between them. So in this case, what I need to do first is I need to calculate the step size. So I'm going to say step is going to be what? It's going to be the, the, the length of the interval, so the maximum value minus the minimum value. And that I can access by saying d dot. And you can see that the development environment, the script development environment already gives me access to the fields, the properties and the methods of this particular object d and of the interval struct, the interval class. So if I go down here, you can see that intervals have a lot of stuff. They have the length, right? They have the minimum and maximum. But what I'm looking for is for t1 and t0. T1 is the value at the end of the domain, and T0 is the value at the beginning of the end. How do I know this? Again, I know this because I've used Rhino common a lot. 
I can I know where to find the documentation and read to it, but I will explain all of that in the next video. All right. So I'm going to say T1, which is the upper bound of the domain, minus D dot T0, which is the lower bound of the domain. That is going to give me a signed length. So if T1 is smaller than T0, then this number will be negative, which is fine because the step size can be negative as well. And I'm going to divide this by N, which is the amount of elements that I have, the amount of gaps that I have between numbers. So this is going to be the step size. And then after that, I'm super lazy. So I'm just going to go here and copy and paste this. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to create a list of doubles. I'm going to iterate between I equals zero, I equals N plus one, because remember N is the number of steps between numbers. It's not the amount of numbers. So because it's the amount of caps, the amount of numbers is the amount of caps plus one. So then V is going to be the starting value, which in our case was D dot T zero. So the lower bound of the interval plus how many numbers we have calculated times the step size that we just calculated here. All right. And then I'm going to add V to the list of values. And I'm going to say here that the result is going to be equal to those values. And I'm going to hit here. And I believe this is correct. All right. So I'm going to um, <clears throat> And this should be uh, nine values and nine values. And you can see that we're getting very similar results, etc. So I think this component is working, is working well. All right. Now, warning, if I went through this a little fast again, because for this series, I'm assuming that you're familiar with C sharp programming and with creating basic numerical algorithms. If this was, if you found this a little confusing, not the interval part that I will get back to in a second. But if the whole creating a list, iterating with a for loop, and this kind of like plus, minus, blah, 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 whatever, if you found this a little confusing, you may want to go back to the learning C sharp playlist and reinforce um, and reinforce your C sharp writing skills. Or you may just want to stay here and maybe through working together with us, you will also um, you will also get a bit stronger on that end. Okay. All right, beautiful. So I think we can remove this already. And we now have our two custom components for creating numerical sequences. All right. And um, is that all I want to say for all I want to do for this exercise? Yes, I think this is, um, I think this is what, I think this is going to be a good introduction, uh, this set of utility components. I'm going to spend a few seconds just cleaning them up a little bit and saying like, oh, this is arithmetic. And this one here is uh, string manipulations. And this one here is going to be numerical sequences. All right. And, uh, and this here, can I, how, I forgot, how do you write a scribble? Uh, scribble, yes. So these are going to be, this is going to be the, um, what is going to be? Utility components, right? And we're going to crank that up a little bit. All right, and that's going to be those. So these are going to be the prototypes, because when we make our, when we make our plugin, I will want to click on the plugin and then have a tab here, utility components. And then we'll have here arithmetic, string, numerical sequences. And then we'll have another one like meshes or we have another one surfaces, whatever. So I want to start organizing them in a way that will make it easy for us to then implement it into the plugin. Okay. Beautiful. So I think with this, I'm quite happy with where we are. 
I just wanted to make a few examples to warm up uh, to creating Grasshopper components uh, with C Sharp scripting. And then what I would like to do next is like now get into the, the cool stuff, which is how can we... So what I wanted to do here is just constrain myself to doing operations that could be done with vanilla C Sharp or with C Sharp operations that come out of the box. But now I want to move on to the cool stuff, which is like doing geometry operations, right? And for those, we're going to need to use Rhino Common. And for that, I would like to spend a little bit of time explaining what Rhino Common is, how it's related to Rhino, to Grasshopper, and to programming within those two environments. And then we can see examples of how to apply the nice geometry types that come with Rhino Common and use them in our components. So that's going to be the core of the next few videos in the series. All right, wonderful. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned a lot. And if you did, maybe you want to consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, um, sending a note, joining the Discord server, uh, sending a waving emoji, a praying emoji, whatever, whatever your jam for gratitude online, <laughs> whatever that is. That helps us a lot to share the message across the internet, okay? Thank you very much and see you on the next videos on this series. <clears throat> oh, all right. Oh, I'm still here? Okay. Intro to parametric modeling. No, this one. Oh, okay. All right, it's 3 p.m. And the next thing that, the next on the list is going to be, the next video on the list is going to be Rhino Common and that's gonna take me some time. And I also need kind of mental clarity to do that. So I think we're gonna pin, put a pin on this one. I'm gonna stay here on this video. Are there any questions, concerns, anything you would like to go over? You've been very silent this afternoon. <laughs> um, uh, whoa. Okay, so I'm going to save these files. No, no need to save this. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and yeah. Okay. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm not sure when the next time. Remember how I said I was going to be doing a hackathon, a life thong? I'm not sure that's going to happen anymore. I'm, I start teaching next Wednesday. I have a lot of teaching this semester. I just don't have the time. So I think we may stick to the two live streams per day, per week um, to get this going. If I can give it a push during some weekend, I may do that. But I can't promise at this point. I'm not sure what's going to happen. So, all right. So I'll see you on the next live stream whenever that can be. Thank you very much for being here. And bye-bye. See you.